So we're actually here in the winery right now. Do you want to talk to, to us a little bit about the whole project and how it kind of came to fruition? Sure. It's, um, it's a privately funded project, which is uh, completely privately funded. Um, it's a complex of winemaking and brewing and food science uh, laboratories. Um, we'll just focus on the winery bit today because that's more one I'm more familiar with. Um, the project started out as building a new winery for our facility, which um, our department is one of the oldest in campus, 125 years old. Um, we will live in, or worked in previously, a, a winery which was 70 years old. Wow. And so uh, didn't even have a power meter, okay? Wow. Uh, didn't have any water meters. <laughs> so this is a difficult thing to actually talk about sustainability when you work in a place like that. Sure. Um, more to the point, it was very poor in reproducibility of research experiments. And so over many years, um, a number of people um, contributed and built uh, the base of the capital which actually resulted in this building. Uh, once the building was started um, there was an opportunity from a number of people uh, as, as comment and input to actually consider making it a LEED building and getting it certified. Not simply saying it's LEED equivalent, actually getting it certified. Wow. Um, and that cost extra money and so the question was if we were going to be LEED certified will we go for LEED Platinum? and would, how much would that cost and would we be able to raise that money? Um, how, that, much money was the, how much money did it cost? The building it? was approximately $14 million when it was started. Um, the premium for Lee Platinum is about $2 million. So it's about a 17% uh, premium on the base building. The base building close to a, what was thought to be lead gold. Um, but a very complicated building. A lot of different demands but a lot of different spaces. So it's... Um, it's not just square footage, it's actually quite complicated square footage. And how footage. did you raise the money because it was all private, correct? Well, it, the, it begins with a lead gift by lead gift. Uh, begins with a, a, a starting gift from Mr. Mondavi. Uh, the complex that you probably saw outside the Mondavi Institute buildings, um, that resulted from a gift that he made to the university that was matched with by state funds and then uh, some additional money from the campus and the college that resulted in that being constructed. Uh, he also set aside an amount of money which was for the winery, for the winery to begin. Um, that was matched with others uh, for the money for the brewery. Um, a number of other people, now up to something like 200, have contributed to build it from basically 5 million to 8.5. Um, that's when the project began. Um, at that time, a group of people, uh, the most important of them being Jess Jackson and Barbara Banke, um, gave us a gift to ask each of the teams that were competing to do an estimate of what it would take their base design to be a lead platinum design. And that gave us three estimates of what it would be for essentially different variations of the same building. Um, when we got that estimate, uh, we went back to them. They provided the first third of that money. Uh, others then followed and matched them. And suddenly we were 1.2 out of 2.1 uh, million, 2 .1 million quickly, wow. um, and that reset the course of the project to be a Lee Platinum building. Cool. Um, we'll talk, let, let's, let's walk around sure. and let's check out uh, some of the big uh, elements of the facility and, and how it became Lee Platinum and sure. what, so there's, what it looks like on an energy side. So um, there's a number of features in Lee, there's five or so categories, uh, let's just focus on the energy ones. So the issue really is how do you build a building with high natural light, daylight, high thermal efficiency, um, minimal use of lights, high efficiency lights, um, nighttime cooling, um, on site renewable power. Um, what else? What else? On oh, in this case, um, one of the features of a fermentation hall is that carbon dioxide is being released from all the fermenters. So you're looking at uh, roughly 80 of the first of the 150 that we will have eventually. These are 200 litre research fermenters. Each of them has been designed to capture the carbon dioxide and remove it from the building. Uh, normally in a winery that would simply go into the air, you'd bring in outside air, 
uh, as you bring in outside air in a hot climate, which is what we're in, you actually then have a big cooling load because you brought in outside air. Right. So if you can capture the CO2 and duct it out of the building, you don't have to bring in the outside air, you don't have the cooling load. So that was not just, that's not a, that's nothing special about the building, it's special about a winery building sure. to actually greatly reduce the amount of air conditioning required. Um, the surrounding part, you'll notice, well this is daytime, it's uh, what, 1.30? It's a sunny afternoon in Davis in November, and the only lights that are on are the security lights, which yeah. we can't turn off. So this is daylight, and we typically teach and operate most of the daytime in natural daylight inside. Um, uh, the material, I think, is called, um, oh, drawing a blank. Um, it's a multi-layered uh, plastic material, which has basically, well, think of a dual pane window. Mm -hmm. This is like three dual pane windows. Um, uh, three air gaps with dividing plastic, high light transmission, high thermal efficiency. Cool. The roof uh, looks like a steel roof. Well, it is, except that it has about 12 inches of insulation between the bottom of it and the outside of it. And the outside looks just the same. So you think it's a single layer steel roof, but it's actually a very heavily insulated steel roof. Um, the building uh, architecture was trying to be um, barn-like, look at agricultural buildings, um, hence the, the, um, the roof. Um, in this facility, in this main room, where um, um, we can do triplicate replications of up to 50 wines at the same time. Cool. Uh, heat and cooled independently. Uh, chilled water systems, which again are very efficient. Um, not very hot water and not very cold water, but hot enough and cold enough to control the temperatures of what we want. So we've clipped the cool, the energies of the cooling load dramatically, and we've clipped the energy load of the heating uh, wow. performance. Um, what about the renewable energy? Any renewable energy, yes. Yeah, so the south facing slopes of this entire building uh, will be covered with solar panels. We don't have them yet, but they hope to be installed in December. Um, that'll generate 100 kilowatts at, at peak load. Um, that puts the winery um, completely off the grid during daytime. Wow. Um, it becomes now a fully solar winery by kilowatts, not by kilowatt hours. Okay. On a kilowatt hour basis, this is an energy positive building, not a net so neutral. You'll send power back, huh? We'll send power back and we'll give <laughs> it back to the campus, and um, I'm sure they'll be appreciative. Sure. Um, but the campus purchased um, an agreement which allowed us to be solar, which allowed us to be lead. Um, in terms of lead points, um, roughly 40% of your on-site renewable will give you six points, or the maximum you can. Uh, this building is 100%. So we're well beyond the point score on a lead platinum in that category. Um, and it's my understanding we have more renewable energy than any other lead platinum building in terms of load. Wow. Um, corresponding to that, we have rainwater capture from this roof for toilets and landscaping. And that's my understanding the extent of rainwater use is more um, than any other Lee Platinum building. And for us, energy and water are the two crucial factors in the future, and to build a building which em embodies those two as, as efficient as possible and as um, um, sustainable and self-sustainable as possible was it were important targets. And, and how, how long has the building been up and running? Since uh, August. Uh, we moved in, I it's think, the last week. Months. Yeah, a few months. This harvest. So we had to teach in here this year, and we wanted to do our research projects in here this year. Um, the last of the fermentations is just finishing, um, but we were moving in in uh, August, and we're ready, fortunately, with a late season, um, but we're able to do that. Um, and how much wine is going to be uh, manufactured from this, from this um, first harvest? Most people in the industry talk about tons or cases or whatever. In our world, it's how many wines do you make. So we're doing triplicate fermentations for research reasons. Um, we'll probably do something like 500, 600 wines a year um, at this capacity, which is probably about 100 tons thereabouts. Um, in terms of CO2 capture, um, there's the issue of worker safety, there's the issue of outside energy and outside air and cooling loads, but there's also an issue of wanting the winery to be zero carbon. And by zero carbon, that to get back to having no net emission, um, not by offset, but by the ability to capture it and trap it. And the building's been constructed. Uh, you can probably see 
um, there's a large grey pipe, PVC pipe that goes out that has CO2 on it. Um, every fermenter, the CO2 from it is captured, ducted out of the building. Um, the future plan is to go to another building which will have a room which does nothing but sequester the CO2 on site. Very cool. Making it a zero carbon winery by emission. This is really cool. Last, last yep. question. Why, why, were you, why did you want to be in charge of the project? Uh, I didn't want to be in charge of it. Um, just spent a lot of time thinking about it. Yeah. So I teach a class on winery design. I help other people design wineries around the world. Okay, so is this, this your passion? This is our backyard and this was a chance to do something very special. Um, the other feature was there are lots of people who were telling us these are the kinds of things you should be doing. Um, and if you listen to those, that's what you, when you get the chance, you actually do it. Um, been an enormous number of people that have been instrumental in helping us and I could get in a very big list but um, I, it's, not, it's not me and it's not just our group, it's a whole lot of other people that have really made this possible. Sure. Um, just while you're here, since you're interested in, in energy and other things, um, it may not be apparent to you but each of these fermenters that's got a little vertical tube in it okay. is measuring the density and in the world of fermentations that's not such a big deal except these ones are wireless. Wow. So uh, they're sending signals back to the main control room. Um, uh, 150 of them will be buzzing and sending signals uh, rapidly. Um, greatly assists the precision with which we can do fermentations, as well as um, uh, futuristic in terms of what that holds for students. Um, uh, my understanding is this is the largest wireless network in the fermentation world right now. Wow. As well as being the things we talked about from Energy Lead Platinum self-sustainable in energy and water. Fantastic. Um, the bigger picture long term is to put more fault of attacks on, to generate hydrogen on site, um, to operate at night time on a fuel cell running on hydrogen, to use the waste heat from the fuel cell to generate hot water, uh, to do passive solar, hydrogen, hot water system, excess from a fuel cell, hybrid to generate hot water. You guys aren't messing around. Uh, well, no, well, we sort of are. Um, <laughs> most people put in a cooling system. Uh, we have an interest in putting in a cooling system, which is fault of attack, okay. which will run a little compressor that will run a little ice maker. The ice maker will go into the tanks. We'll trickle our cold water over, warm water over the ice. We'll generate chilled water. The, the bigger picture is that the entire winery runs on storage. So we will capture and use different technologies and hybrids to um, complement the storage volume so that the winery runs off storage and never kicks in peak load. Wow. Um, so by design in the big picture we're not we're trying to smooth out all of the loads we're trying to provide backup and support as storage rather than batteries or as um, other means um, and that secondary project is still going forward. Um, the other feature of that building uh, second building is um, it's being designed so that each of those systems could be delivered on a skid. And over the course of every year or two years, we'll replace that skid with the next technology. So the, the, the systems in this winery continue to be evolving. And updating. It'll be an evolving, updating technology winery. And it'll be zero carbon by emission and by energy. It'll be fully self-sustainable in energy, day and night. And it'll be fully self-sustainable in water. Wow. That's the objective. Um, and so Lee Platinum was important to begin to set the stage. Sure. Um, and we're beginning to pro progress down that path. Um, the most striking thing is that five years or so ago, even well, longer when we first talked about these kinds of things, um, they were almost, uh, were almost called heretics. Sure. Um, we don't get called heretics anymore. And in some respects, the there's, pioneers. A, there's an obligation that people want us to do these things. Um, not so much to find the magic answer, but to show what's feasible, proof of concept, get metrics, um, show performance that people typically can't find data for, as well as to demonstrate that principle in a building, this one happens to be a winery, as well as surround our students by that kind of technology, that kind of vision, that kind of perspective. Sure. And that's all of that's coming together in what we have here. Well, thank you so much for giving us some time today to show us. I have no doubt that our audience will greatly appreciate the time that you've given us and that we definitely want to stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you.